What is up everybody? I have some great news. Phenomenal news. Super excited. Can't wait to tell you. Here it goes. Hipsters don't think beards are cool anymore. Isn't that awesome? That's great news for all the bearded out there. For those with some calloused hands, a little grease under their nails, a little dirt under there from a hard day's work. Now we can have our beards back. So thank you guys very much. So now that all the hipsters are sliding back into them Birkenstocks and jumping into a Mercedes Sprinter van and heading off to go get a $6 cup of coffee, we can enjoy having our beards. I'm excited, you should be excited. The one thing I will say is the beard oil is nice. All right. I'm gonna give them that. The beard oil stays. They could take their Birkenstocks and go, but the beard oil stays. So if you need some beard oil, go check out thebeardclub.com. Use code FNG Academy to get 15% discount. Uh, and if you are a hipster, I doubt you'd be watching this channel, but just in case, don't worry, they got something for you too. It's called a trimmer. Uh, and you're gonna take that thing, you're gonna take the guard completely off. You're gonna start right here and you're gonna buzz all the way down your chin and then all the way back up the other side. Uh, and again, go get in those Birkenstocks and just flop your ass right out of here because we don't want you. Okay, guys, if you're a bearded man out there that works for a living, go check out thebeardclub.com. Use code FNG Academy. We'll see you guys next time. All right, guys, let's jump into this movie for Beers and Breakdowns. Today we're doing All Quiet on the Western Front. Highly requested. Yeah, highly requested. Super intense movie. This Very had, intense. This had some intense fighting scenes. Yeah. One thing is that when I looked it up, like explaining the movie, they called it an anti-war. I'm confused by that. The movie is anti-war? Yeah, an anti-war movie. Why, by showing the realities of war? Yeah, I guess. That's how I see it. I just see that as this movie is just the realities of war. I don't yeah. see it as anti-war. War is is dirty. It's Ugly, not brutal. Fair. It's bad things happen. And they, I think, did a good job of showing that. Portraying in this movie. Them. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why that makes it an anti war. I just think it's the realities of war. But anyway, I guess if, unless you're trying to frame a war movie in like this a heroic perspective, if it's about the realities of war, then it's anti war. But I don't know. All the best war movies have that like somber side to it right. because it's more realistic. Um, but just so you guys know, we just got done doing the Baton Death March. We did half. The honorary trail uh, to test out the ruck trainer and to just come and show our support as a company um, and get to meet some of you guys at the baton death march we knew there was going to be a lot of soldiers there we got the pleasure of shaking some of your guys's hands um, and when you guys reach out and say oh hey what's up man we really like the channel or we like what you guys do it means a lot to us you're yeah. not a burden we think it's awesome we really appreciate it um, so never, please never feel hesitant of coming up and saying what's up. We truly, truly appreciate it. It makes us feel cool, honestly, that you guys would even recognize us and think yeah. it's cool to see us. We think it's cool to see you guys. So every one of you that said what's up and said hi, one of you just got selected um, and starts the Q course in October. Uh, looks totally cool, seemed like a totally cool guy and I hope uh, everything goes well. Um, yeah, it was just such a cool experience. It was motivating too. Yeah, super motivating. Like, kept us going, like, time sucked out there. Like, we just yeah. got done with that one, that super soft sand section. Yeah. And then we met that one guy, and it's like, oh, I feel all right now, yeah. let's keep going. He was like, oh, F the G guys. And I was like, oh, I had a pep in my step yeah, right? for a while. It's cool. And all of a sudden, my ruck got real light. Uh, but the, the ruck trainer held up amazing. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, one of my favorite aspects of it was the kidney pad. So the kidney cover that we developed, because we don't like the chafing that comes on the uh, Molly 2 kidney pad. Because you got to remember that kidney pad's meant to be passed from soldier to soldier to soldier and last. It's not meant for comfort. So we designed uh, a cover that straps right over the top of it so everyone in the, mil in the army could use it. Everyone who uses a Molly 2 uh, could just strap it on. It doesn't modify your ruck in any way. And it's got a memory foam style cushion. So instead of shifting and rubbing your hips raw, it just conforms to your hips and stays in place so so good yeah. such an upgrade to that ruck system but anyways let's jump into beers and breakdowns and i think the first thing is pretty dope Just 
just entrenching tool kill, man. You gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do, man. You gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta talk about the entrench tool kill. <laughs> we got issued entrenching tools and they always had that sharpened edge. Right, right. And it's like that was the idea behind it. That guy's gonna be a legend in his unit. Yeah. <laughs> How could you imagine just like running up to someone with a gun going with a shovel? Jeez. Like, don't bring a shovel to a gunfight, bro. <laughs> That's a recipe for disaster. You know, when I was in the regular army uh, as a medic, we, uh, it was obviously a very short time, so it was all garrison time. But the only wound that I got to treat, actual wound, was a guy that hit somebody else in the face with his e-tool. Oh, why? You know how every unit's got that one guy that's just like, can't get anything right. He's always ate up. He's always, his uniform's always jacked up. Like, yeah. he's just that guy. Well, this was the guy. They were doing a layout. All the infantry cats are doing a layout. And they said E-Tool. And he grabs his E-Tool and he's like, I got it. And his buddy was next to him. And oh. when he went like that, it caught him right in the face and just split him. It was like a Harry Potter wound. He had like the little like lightning bolt in his head. And Dang. that was, and they're like, medic! And we're like, who the hell's calling for a medic right now? And a layout. <laughs> yeah. So we run over there, we see his, like, dripping with blood down his face, and we're like, oh, we finally got one! <laughs> we like, put, a, put a band-aid on it. <laughs> that was it. It's like, what else you want us to do? Well, you might bleed out, but I don't know. <laughs> oh, that I just graduated. Oh, it was funny. What a dickhead, dude. I would be so pissed. <laughs> I got it. I was like, okay, I'm proud of you. Why don't you look around for swinging around your e-tool? My medic got so mad at me when I plugged that dude's gunshot wound. Because he didn't, he didn't get to do yeah, it? Yeah, he was like, bro, you know that's a separate award for yeah. medics? And I was like, I'm sorry, bro. He took his CV yeah, from him. took his CV. <laughs> what a and the, the Just pull it out and replug it yourself. Yeah. The funny thing is, like, bravos don't get for plugging a wound in combat. Yeah. So it's not like I got an award. So if I would have known, I could have been like, at least like held it and then just called it. Hey, Tony, you want to come yeah. wrap this thing up? Oh, he could have done his job and got an award for it. I didn't know. Way to go. That shot's so cool. Mm -hmm. Would you have picked that music, Abel? It's very like European. That's so intense. Yeah. <laughs> so to me, this scene was just like, it was morbid how systematic they got mm -hmm. at like disposing of bodies and then taking their uniforms back, getting their boots, cleaning all the blood out, yeah. fixing the, the holes, and then getting right back to new soldiers to yeah. get them right back to the front. And even that one where he's like, oh, this belongs to somebody yeah. else. He's like, oh. Must have been too small for him and rips it off. Yeah, but I mean, if you think about it, like in a time like this, they have thousands upon thousands of new recruits, right? So for them to keep up with that demand and actually like supply new uniforms and stuff, all the money that takes, all the mm -hmm. uniforms and all, it sucks. But I mean, I guess it becomes it's a, fa a death factor. Exactly, yeah. You That's just, crazy though. Yeah. It's so wild. It's like you gotta get rid of the bodies of your own people. It's not like yeah. the enemy. It's just yeah. like, sorry guys. You're Strip out. them for everything of value. Yeah. Give it to the new guys coming in, and then once they die, do it again. Jeez. It's morbid. That's it's wild. And then the, it's crazy how disconnected we are from like those large scale conflicts yeah. like that. Yeah. Our future, the future of Deutschland, lies in the hands of its greatest generation. My friends, that is you, you see. My, my only reaction to that when I watched it was like, it's crazy when you pull your own personal patriotism away from it, mm -hmm. how just manipulative the whole situation comes off. Yeah. There's just old men manipulating young men yeah. to fight their battles so they could accomplish the goals that they want. Yeah. And then we as young men just fall in line and we're like, yeah, yeah. patriotism. Because that guy giving the speech knows all too well the actual realities of what's going on yeah that almost all of them are going to die yeah but he's like hey in a few short weeks we're yeah. all going to march on paris yeah. but I, it's 
Yeah, that's wild to think of it like yeah. that. But when we're involved in it, because we had those riled up yeah. experiences and those riled up moments, we're so engulfed in the patriotism and serving mm -hmm. our country and all these things that once you remove that and you see it just for what it is, it's like just straight up manipulation. Oh, for sure. <laughs> it's yeah. like just these old men just taking advantage of young people's desire to be part of something bigger than themselves. Yep. And it's like, wow, you, you guys are actually kind of pieces. <laughs> yeah, he was like selling them on like some grand adventure yeah. or something, but legitimately almost all these kids are about to die. Yeah. Two minutes later, they're in the worst hell of their lives. Yeah. And he knows damn well where they're going. Oh, yeah. To be entrenched in, I mean, they, that front didn't move but like yards for years. Dude, trench warfare is one of the nastiest, dirtiest types of warfare yeah, that you like can have. Rats, shit, piss, oh, sewage all running all through the floor. You're trying to live underground. They don't have enough food. And it's just like, just keep sending them. And then that, literally that line, I think it says at the end, it moved like a few meters for like three years. Jesus. So they're just going and dying and going and dying and going. This is, it's insane. Are you dead? No, sir. I was just trying to put my mask on. <laughs> this is Darth Vader in his ass. <laughs> Cold armor. You will almost certainly be dead by a door. I just got the impression during the scene that, like, they didn't have much train up. Obviously, they're yeah. rushing them to the front lines, but I wonder what kind of basic training that they had. I don't know if there's... There couldn't have been much. Like, probably yeah. just a very quick familiarization how to load your gun how to shoot your gun get on the way yeah and then he said it the only clue and someone probably knows the answer to this and you can comment down below if you know the answer as to what kind of train up they went through but he said they would like for you to last six weeks right so i'm assuming that there's a six week train up before new recruits get there so they only want them to last long enough for the next batch to get there yeah i don't know but so one thing how old, or I'm sorry, how long was it when we were in, when you when you hear gas, 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 until you're supposed to have your mask on? Was it nine seconds? I have no idea. I don't remember. That was always I would, a pain in the ass. Though. I would never have it on that fast. <laughs> nine seconds? I don't, yeah, I, don't remember. I don't even remember where I stored that thing. <laughs> oh, didn't you keep it like hanging off your side, yeah. just flapping on your leg? Yep, right, on, right here on the side. Yeah, nine seconds. I, I remember think so. when I was in South Korea, you're supposed to have it on. Like all times, basically, all of us, like all the regular army guys, were walking around. We we're on a very small camp. It was like the size of an airfield, basically, because that's all it was. Um, so all the regular army guys would walk around with it, and with we their mask like, on all the time. No, just down here. Oh, okay. Uh, in their pouch. They're like, we're not doing that. No, it's dumb. <laughs> Until the gas comes out, you're like, yeah, yeah. right. I mean, we we're only like 30 kilometers from the border with North Korea, and they're like, it, it's dumb. If anything happens, it's not going to make a difference, anyways. <laughs> Where are you going? I'll come back. It's nearly over. No, let me go. Here you are. Let me help you. I want to get out. Come on. Calm yourself. Ooh, oh, my dear. Gee. He just got exploded. <laughs> 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 My only comment on that was that's what happens when you don't have a good training period is these guys don't have confidence in their training. Mm -hmm. So they're, they just get terrified and they want to run away. Yeah. yeah. You know, and most, all that little group was all just wanting to like leave as soon as possible. But it's, but it's like, where are you going to go? He's like, oh, I'll be back. I'll be back. Me, where are you going? You're going to go hug a mortar, my guy. Like, <laughs> yeah. You don't want to go out there. This is the safest place you can be right, right. now. In this bunker is the safest place. And then it's like, Jeez. but when you don't have the training to rely on, you don't feel like you have a chance. Yeah. And when you don't feel like you have a chance, you just want to run away. Yeah. And that's the difference between, you know, especially special operations, where it's, we, we're so well trained that we always feel like we have a chance. Yeah. We always feel like we could think our way through it or act our way through it or, or somehow figure it out in order to have the best chance at surviving and being successful. But I thought this was a good example of just having none of that when it's like, we're going to die. Yeah. So let's just run away. Yeah. Little mm -hmm. did you know, it's more dangerous up there yeah. than it is down there. And he just goes, Oof. Jeez. 
<laughs> Everybody else is just like, whoa! <laughs> yeah. like, uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> and then immediately he's like, everybody else. Yeah. Like, oh, no! <laughs> but he went out. <laughs> Wait a second, I don't want to go out. It didn't work out well. And then the roof collapses. <laughs> Imagine being a soldier and like having to steal meat. Just to know, eat. Right? Like that would suck Jump so a fence bad. And dude. Steal a goose. You got to go steal a goose just to get your hands on some meat. It's and almost then you, like Sears school. Yeah. Oh, it's very much like Sears school. To, you remember those chickens at Sears school? Mm. There was like, we had, or at the camp, there was just chickens. And we're just sitting there like, we're going to get one of those chickens. And you could tell one of them, one of the previous classes, I guess, had gotten one of the chickens because his leg was broke. But it healed up like in a weird angle. Oh, and shit. we had heard stories about like people like stealing chickens and like, chopping them up and cooking them and stuff. But the whole time we're so hungry, like we won't eat that fucking chicken. <laughs> we'll get that chicken. I didn't remember that. There was, <laughs> None of us got that chicken. If there was live chickens there. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. But I'm it does sure. remind me of serious school, but I just thought it, like how bizarre to be on the front lines. And then you got to pick your homies who's going to eat that goose with you. Right, yeah. Like yeah. you better, better hope you weren't a this whole time <laughs> you could be eating goose it's like nah it's just us three okay <laughs> like listen we don't tell goose. nobody also like see your school <laughs> it's like when you get a little cracker or something like, yeah you, you gotta, gotta share it with your you. homies that's funny because in in uh the interrogation phase you're just like i'm hungry and they're like we'll have a cookie yeah we'll have a cracker and you're like i'm really hungry and like <laughs> have two crackers so you're like I'm so <laughs> you start taking all the crackers, put them in your what pocket. What about the rest of my men? Yeah, like, and then you go. They put you in that box, and you start picking all the homies. Yeah, <laughs> you got a f- pocket full of crackers. I'm like, you're my homie. Yeah. You're my homie. Did I ever tell you the story of the tattoo on my ribs? Huh. So it says it's a tattoo on my ribs. It's uh, like a treasure chest. It's an underwater thing. Treasure chest, the pirate wheel and stuff. But it's got a scroll around it that says uh, "Fortune favors the bold." Mm-hmm. And so when we were in Sears school, we had this CA guy with us. His name was Rainey. Can't remember his first name, but he was awesome. Um, but he was going CA. And when we were doing our evasion part, that's when we had that uh, Arctic frost or whatever. Oh, it so, it, so bad. There was snow everywhere. It was this huge winter storm. So, so we had to cold. do our evasion on Camp McCall for my class. We weren't able to do it in actual North Carolina proper like everybody else did. Um, so the cadre would come out every night or every day they'd come and check our feet and stuff like that to make sure we didn't, weren't hiding frostbite or anything and the cadre come out and they call us out and we're in the back of the van and he's checking us and we look and there's like a couple mints like you, those red and white peppermints you get at like a Mexican restaurant or something Yeah. and we're so hungry like fuck man I want those mints Hell yeah. and uh, Franny's there or Rainy's there with me and we're looking at the mints but the cadre's there and we I let it go. And after the cadre, you're like, all right, you guys are good. You can go back to your camp. We start walking back. He's like, hey, Kurt. And he pulls a mint out. Of oh, oh, oh. And I was like, you got one of the mints? And he's like, fortune favors the bold. Oh, <laughs> and he split it in half and we ate the mint. Oh, that's And it sick. was like, even after we got captured, I remember sitting in one of the cells and I had like a rock or something. And I'm writing like fortune favors the bold on the wall to like keep <laughs> oh, yeah. me going and stuff. And then a couple years later, I got the tattoo. It's just something that's oh, always that's stuck dope. with me. So I had a Sears school someone shared a honey packet with me. Ooh. Dude, he gave me a full honey packet. Dang. He was like, Sean, come here. And I was like, what's up, dude? And he goes, check it out. I got two left. And he had two <laughs> honey packets. And I was like, oh. <laughs> like, I looked at that honey packet in his hand. And I was like, don't, don't. You don't have to give that to me, man. I was like, I, that's gold. <laughs> that's liquid gold. And he goes, nah, man, have one. And right. I was like. We're best friends for life. Yeah, you could call me to this day and be like, dude, I need a place to stay. I need some food. I need some money. I'm like, I got you because <laughs> of a honey packet. It's so wild how much something so small can yeah. mean to you. And another one in Sears school, like when we were actually in the, uh, the camp after we got captured, somebody came back and one of the crackers that they gave him during interrogation, he kept it. And it was a little saltine cracker, like one square of a saltine cracker. Yeah. 
and he like broke it in pieces and there's like four of us and all you got was just a tiny corner but that tiny quarter, that yeah. saltine, meant everything. Yeah. It was Because it was better than nothing. Yeah, man. exactly. And it, would, it showed his spirit to be like, not be selfish right. and to share it with you. And so they give you those opportunities in SEER school. And when the people take advantage of them, it's not training anymore. Yeah. It's that person just being a really good person. Yeah. yeah. And it feels like pure joy in your yeah. insides to be like, I can't believe you just did that They're for gonna, me, dude. You're cracker. Yeah. <laughs> what did you do? You, you sure you're cracker, guys, right? right? <laughs> You could have come to my wedding, man. I'm already married, but if I get remarried, you come to my wedding, man. Shit. Fucking idiots. Stupid big boys, they took them off. Damn. That's what it's just a whole room full of young soldiers. Yeah. And they got gassed and took shelter and then took their masks off too soon and just killed them all. Damn. Imagine just walking into a whole room full of all your buddies and just yeah. all your fellow soldiers and be like, that's for nothing. Yeah. Just because they, like they did all the right things, but then just took the masks off too soon. That's wild. I wouldn't even know like how long to wait. Yeah, right. I was like, obviously you're not gonna take it off when you can still see the gas if it's colored or something like, I don't know, how long does it I don't last? Know. That's one of those things, chemical warfare is dirty, man. I'd be like, listen. It's so bad. You take yours off first. <laughs> and then you'd be like, no, and I'm like, okay. Here's the, here's the most uh, junior private here. <laughs> Two junior privates, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. <laughs> you take your mask off. And then if you're cool in like six hours, yeah. then we'll take our mask off. It's almost like, again, it's your school when they teach you to, if they're gonna eat something, you don't know if it's poisonous. Yeah, yeah. Touch it to your your <laughs> lip a little bit and then wait a couple hours, and then touch it to your tongue. The part that bothered me about that advice was you're telling me in order to test something that's poisonous, I'm starving yeah. and I have to wait like almost 24 hours worth of testing. Yeah, it, no, it was an over a day for the whole process. That's insane. Because first you're touching it, then you're like licking it, then you eat just a little bit and you're the whole time you're waiting hours, hours and hours and hours and, hours. and, and then like six hours at one point because you have to digest yeah. a whole part of the per piece that you ate. So like, hey, a day and a half later, I can finally take a, a whole strawberry. <laughs> like, it's, <laughs> it's rotten by the time you're allowed <laughs> yeah. to eat it. You're like, well, I had three berries, but they're <laughs> all rotten now. It would have been good. It would have been awesome. <laughs> I have just put the German delegation to the armistice negotiations on the train to Compiègne. So it was right there in that scene that I realized something. Hmm. I think this is the origin story of the bad guy from Sonic. What's that guy? It's a Nazi. Before he starts going after Sonic and Tails, he's all—he's a German Nazi. Oh my god! That's like how he started, and that's why he's so evil. And then his mustache continues to grow as he gets older. You figured it out. It's I all part it of out. the Sonic universe. Yeah, the whole Sonic universe is actually based around Nazis. <laughs> the big silver. Uh, I really hate that little blue bastard. So much. <laughs> <laughs> he comes out Sonic's career, he's like, nine, 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 nine. So I only wonder, as I watch this, I wonder if there's a better tactic for crossing a giant open field, like, than just to run your ass off and hope for the best. Like, is, could potentially, and I'm not saying that this would be a better tactic, but, you know, five second sprint drop. I'm up, they see me, I'm down. Yeah, I'm up, they That's see me, I'm down. That's probably where this came from, or something like this. Yeah, instead of just like, hoping for the best, because you yeah. got mortar fire coming in, which there's nothing you can do about that. That's right. luck of the draw. But again, there is something you can do about it because 
you could at least figure out some way to increase your chances of not being in that position because they still have to bracket you. Mm -hmm. So there's always a way to like increase your odds of success, right? I think it's just more people at this point. More people like the whole like school, the fish school theory, like just more send more people and your chances are better in surviving. Because well, then, then you just give them, accept give more them, loss. Yeah, give them too many targets to, I don't know, overwhelm them with targets, I guess. Ah, that That's just what, sucks. It sucks. There's no good way to go about this. Yeah, because in this it's one, terrible. in this instance, they're not yet dealing with infantry. They're dealing with the mortar fire. Mm -hmm. So then it would probably be the best to just sprint. Maybe sprint in, I don't know, like what's the target area? Can you go outside that what's target area and come back world? in? It's to get to the enemy to advance the front lines. So to to get to their front line, take it over and then own that. The whole point <laughs> is to the whole point is to be gaining ground the yeah. whole time. I just wonder. I don't know if there is. I doubt it. There probably isn't. Yeah. But I was just curious as to whether. Not with with their technology. Probably not much else you can do. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Bro, that Jeez. scene is bananas, dude. CQB with one shot long rifles. Yes. With a uh, bayonet coming out of the front. <laughs> yeah. The thing's like 10 feet long. Oh my God, that's a nightmare Dude, in that area. You got a lever action, so you got doof, and then you got a lever action while the person's aiming you yeah. down and just keep your shit together, try to reload as fast as you can, and then not miss that's the second the shot. The crazy part is once they miss, they're looking at each other trying yeah. to get, like whoever can do it faster. Or if one person just decides to screw it and then he tries to stab him, yeah. he could probably get to you with his blade before you could reload. That's scary. Dude, that was the sketchiest CQB scene I've ever seen in a movie ever, <laughs> ever before. Yeah. That would be the worst. Not fun. Not fun at all. Dude, terrible. I saw that and I was like, that's the worst example of CQB, like worst case scenario. In yeah, CQB. worst case scenario. Not worst example, worst case scenario. That sucks. Dude, that's insane, wow. bro. That looks like they're on a different planet. I know. Could you imagine just like an army of tanks just rolls up? You're just like, ah, we're not prepared for this. Right. Everybody's still shooting at it, too. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> like, what, what are you, you thinking of the tank? The only thing I could think of is to try and flank around, but then I didn't see that they had guns on the sides just for that. Oh, the tanks? Yeah. Yeah, the tanks had the side guns. And they ended up the tanks cross over, and so then they're able to get in and like start throwing grenades inside the tanks. But that's onesies and twosies. That's mm -hmm. not a large scale attack that would actually stop those tanks. Yeah. But the fact that the tanks, in right after this, drive over the uh, trenches, seems like a, a really stupid thing to do. Why? But because, you mean the tank driving over? Yeah, because then you're giving them a chance to get behind you and like put the grenades in. Yeah. But then, you know, well we'll just keep watching because I mean, what else shit, can they do? Yeah. Shit gets even worse. <laughs> That was a wild scene. Bro, that's how I just broke. Shit. My only nose were just damn. There's so much that just happened there. I know. Brought him a small bowl of soup. Dude offed himself. Brought him a small bowl of soup. While he's eating it, he's looking at another soldier just staring at him who's probably starving. Yeah. Watching him eat the soup. He has to like ignore him, go back to eating. He took care of his friend and got his friend's soup. And then his friend just starts trying to shank himself in the neck to end his life. 
And then the other guy comes and steals the suit. Does he really? Yeah, you didn't see? The no. guy, who, as they're dealing with him, the other guy ran up and took the suit and ran away. Oh, I didn't see that. <laughs> the one that was watching him? Yeah. There's a lot going Dude, on right that, that was crazy. I didn't even see him steal the suit. That was a lot. So much desperation and, yeah. and just like bad, bad situation. Would not be a conflict I would want to be in. No, <laughs> no. I can confidently say that I would want no part of this. <laughs> it's like if you get injured, even something that's like highly treatable, yeah, you're just gonna fester and die yep. anyway. They just leave you there. Like they, they didn't know about tourniquets back then. They didn't know about like how to treat infections and stuff. So bad. So the peace treaty gets signed, they end the war, and that German general was like, we're not going back empty-handed, that's our land. And so sends them to attack them anyway. He sends the Germans to attack the French, even though the peace treaty was signed. What the hell? Yeah, just because he didn't want to go back empty, like as a coward, and he didn't want the men to go back as cowards. Oh, they, fuck that. He wanted to capture his mission, so you know, Peace treaty signed, war's over, sends them to attack the French. It's over, bro. Yeah. Time's up. Yeah. All right, play. It's just crazy, man. He said, he said, I hope that general's there with them. No. That's crazy. You're sending these guys off to get slaughtered when the war's already over because you got a personal vendetta or some ego thing that you yeah. want to fulfill. They all, they just get schwacked because he's got his own little ego going Jesus. on. Jesus. That's why the anger carries over to when he goes after Sonic. <laughs> he's pissed, dude. He's still, yeah. He's, he's still, still harboring something. that. He's still chasing something. And he thought, he like, you know what? If I can't beat the French, I could beat some alien hedgehogs. Those hedgehogs are quick. And they whooped his ass. <laughs> Dude, this is, anyway, this is a crazy movie. Yeah. This was crazy intense. Some real, like, World War One, just, oof. Well, what's cool about this movie is you kind of see it from the other side, right? Most movies are, you see it from, like, our side or, like, one of our allies' sides or yeah. whatever. But this one's shot from the German perspective, so it kind of, you know, a lot of movies dehumanize the the other side, the bad guys. But it goes to show you, like, everybody's fighting for a reason. Like, yeah. we're fighting for our homeland, they're fighting for their homeland. So it kind of humanizes them to an, a, to a, an extent. But I, I just think yeah, it's cool to see. Yeah, I, I like how they didn't really get you attached to any side. Yeah. You just feel yeah, like yeah. you're just... Uh, fly on the wall watching these right. things happen. Yeah. Like, even when the, the French guys, like, Attack, enemy attack, enemy yeah. attack. Like, I don't want him to get attacked. Yeah. I don't want those guys to get attacked. The war's over. So you're just seeing it as it is. You're yeah. not getting attached to either one. Uh, but I still, I don't like that they call it an anti-war. I, I don't, don't think it's anti-war. I don't get that. No, it's not like, I think an, to say anti-war, well, maybe it's the political side because we're looking at it as the, the war itself side. And I, to be honest, I glossed over a lot of them in offices and mm -hmm. suits and shit. I was like, this isn't why we're here. Yeah. And I was like, so maybe that's where the anti-war sentiments is coming in and not the combat aspect of it. True. Sure. Uh, so, all right guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode of Beers and Breakdowns. If you've gotten this far, please do us a favor, leave a comment, a like, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you know when more videos are dropping. If you guys are going to selection, know that we got you taken care of. We got videos dropping all the time. We got Dr. B helping you guys out. We got Cody uh, doing the wall fighting system that we're gonna do this week. We're gonna expand on that. We have a ton of great content coming your way to help you get selected, to help you fight, and just good old entertainment watching movies. So make sure you hit the bell notification so you know when the movies are coming out. Um, and if you like Kurt being here, make sure you hit that like button twice. Leave two comments in the <laughs> comment section so we can keep him coming back, because they ain't cheap. <laughs> Florida <laughs> flights are expensive. So it is a long way away. Long way. It's in the bayou. <laughs> it's not in the bayou. <laughs> with them we got them alligators, but we're not in the bayou now. <laughs> we got the bayou, we got the alligators. 
<laughs> you gotta every time he gonna run another alligator come chopping at her, come butt hurting the ass. <laughs> And he's like, I gotta get my gumbo. Is that what you right? think of Florida? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you, not Florida? You have not been to Florida enough, my friend. No, Dude. that's Louisiana, if I, anything. I just see like cauldrons of <laughs> stews and alligators coming in singing songs and stuff. That's definitely not us. And then you got to go to the... If you're from Florida, let him know. If you've <laughs> ever been to Florida, let him know what it is, because that's you, not it. You got to go to the old blind lady who kisses her snake. Jesus. Because you... <laughs> oh, that's Princess and the Frog. That's what I was going to say. If your <laughs> thought of Florida is Princess and the Frog, yeah, you're that's, mistaken, my That's friend. exactly what I think of Florida as, right, is Princess well, and the Frog. We need to get you educated. I just wait for you to pop in. We need to do this in Florida next time. Okay. <laughs> so you can see our alligators are different. <laughs> alligators. <laughs> Our guns <laughs> and the heaters, the smoking pipes. Oh, All right, guys, so we hope you enjoyed that episode. If you made it this far, thank you so much. You guys are our people. Like, subscribe, drop a comment. It helps out a lot. And we'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace.